Today, we are talking about subagents. Subagents are Goose's way of creating independent workers that can tackle specific tasks in isolation. Imagine being able to split yourself into multiple copies, with each copy being able to focus on a different task, but all of them are working at the same time. By the end of this video, you will have a complete understanding of what subagents are, why you would want to use them, when you would want to use them, and of course, how you can actually use them in Goose. So let's start at the beginning. What are subagents? Well, in Goose, you can think of your regular Goose conversation as the main agent. This is what you're probably used to working with. Subagents are separate instances of Goose that can be created by this main agent. And each of these subagents are completely independent, meaning they have their own context and they operate in complete isolation. The idea here is that you can create subagents that specialize in performing very specific tasks. So if you're building out an application, you could create one subagent that's responsible for developing the front end, and you can create another subagent that will build out the back end. Those agents can go off and complete their assigned tasks, and this keeps your main conversation clear and focused, which also preserves your context window. And if one of those subagents runs into any issues and fails, that failure remains isolated in that subagent. Once the subagents are finished doing their job, they report back to the main agent and then they're shut down and cleaned up. You can think of subagents almost like creating a thread in Slack or Discord. It allows you to explore something off to the side without cluttering the main conversation. Using subagents creates this paradigm shift where now instead of your main agent doing all of the work itself, it becomes more of a manager that coordinates and delegates tasks to each of the subagents, which in turn keeps your workflow a lot more organized. Now, of course, subagents are powerful, but just because you have a really cool hammer does not mean that everything is a nail. So what kind of use cases are best for subagents? Well, subagents become particularly valuable when you're working on a larger or more complex task. You can chop up your task into subtasks and then use subagents to perform each of those tasks. And because each of those tasks can be performed independently, subagents are especially useful when your tasks are, ready for the big buzzword? Parallelizable. Parallel, parallel, parallelizable. <laughs> we got there. Essentially, tasks that can be run at the same time, independent of each other. Tasks that can be run in parallel. So again, you can have your front-end developer subagent and your back-end developer subagent each work on their respective parts of the code base at the same time. Okay, so we know what subagents are and when it's best to use them, but how do we actually use them within Goose? Well, the easiest way is to just ask. If you use language like create a subagent or use a subagent, and then just explain what you want the subagent to do, Goose will automatically detect that it should spin up a subagent, and you can see that happening here. If you want Goose to run your agents in parallel, just use words like parallel, simultaneously, at the same time, and, and so on. And Goose will again pick up on this and run the agents in parallel. You can also create reusable subagents with the recipes feature. So for example, here I've got a project manager recipe that can look at a plan document and break that plan down into different subtasks that can each be performed by other different subagents. And now I can just ask Goose to use that recipe as an agent to create different tasks for an application I'm building. And if you want even more flexibility with subagents, you can also use external AI agents from other providers. So if I wanna use OpenAI's Codex agent, I can actually run that as a subagent within Goose. So that's subagents at a very high level. If at this point you're finding yourself wondering how to use subagents on a more practical level, then check out this video where I use six different subagents to build out a really robust MVP of an app. I'll have that video linked down in the description. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.